Welcome back to the ABC of EDC with me, Rick Flat, your host through everything, Everyday Carry. It's chaos over here in England, man. It's just stopped. Like there was a thunderstorm. Now the sun's kind of come out. My studio is in a complete mess. Wall full of drawings I'm working on. Just stuff here you can't see. Even the mountain bike's in here because it's raining outside. Don't want it to get wet. My little neon kind of on air light has run out of battery. It's just a nightmare. But what isn't a nightmare is the fact that we've got another little watch to unbox. And yeah, man, it's a Tudor. Last week, the first Rolex unboxing. This week, the first Tudor unboxing. Exciting times, man. Looking forward to this. Let's not mess around. Let's stop looking at this horrible environment we're in here. And let's just uh, flip it around and go straight in. I'm even burping on camera. Even see that? It burp. <sighs> right. So here we go. The Tudor Black Bay chrono white dial let's get into it beautiful watch let's start with a box here we're, we're kind of comparing this to, to the Rolex, i guess last week more of a kind of basic box this time around are we gonna get a posh flap let's see ah well technically we have a posh flap but it didn't kind of posh flap down but there we go comes down a little to the branding got a little bit of this cellophane -y stuff let's pull the box out a little bit let's let's get rid of this bit we don't need that at the moment now very very stealthy box here man um you know is what it is velvet on the bottom it says a little summit here man little little blurby blurb yeah it's not super expensive super but you know for my money actually nicer than the rolex box now someone commented last time about why you, who cares about the box i care about the box that's right i'm spending some money i want to know what these boxes are like anyway carrying on uh in here a little receipt thing as always my friend gets his watches from a particular place and put that over there some extra links that they took out or we'll move those and let's get to the actual business of this situation this here beautiful black bay tudor whoo or tudor black bay chrono situation white dial lovely little watch let's just put that just aside for a minute what else is in the box here in the bottom being careful not to show you any registration stuff international guarantee uh, the official chronometer certification uh, and then a little user manual blah 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 same as it ever was but yeah nice enough little unboxing experience uh, let's just get this actual watch off of here so here is the watch itself lovely little situation we've got going on let's just get these hands back to the classic 10 to 2 that everybody in the watch reviewing world loves to do now I, re I really need to invest in some of them white gloves or some black gloves because it's it's difficult man to keep this thing from constantly being a fingerprint magnet you know what i mean but part of me don't love the kind of bougie of gloves but we might have to go there anyway let's get some stats out of the way for this bad boy this is a 41 millimeter case now she a bit chunky in a sideways situation this is a 14.6 um mil thickness so it's a kind of chunky settings man i, I gotta admit uh, this is the mt5813 caliber uh, 70 hours power reserve obviously hacking winding auto 200 meters um cost certified date of the six o'clock obviously dome crystal uh very sterile just like the roly very sterile case back with no viewing of this movement at all just good luck with that obviously solid end links screw down crown both on the major crown which is uh probably, i'll put in some b roll you can't get it it's uh it's got that two to crown on it so sign crown uh, so all screw down crowns all these pushers the pushers go all the way out and um i must admit when operating this chronograph there is i can't explain it and, and i wish i wish we could do kind of feel a vision or something where you could get the feeling but when you press this down man it really has got such a mechanical click to it it feels almost like something's breaking mate like the, the crusts the plates of the earth the tectonic plates are moving it really is a pleasure let me try and get the mic up to it and see if i can get the oh you can hear that man it's like It's serious, man. There, there is some serious clickage when you, when you, when you kind of like operate it, operate these. Again, these just screw back down, and obviously to get that water resistance, of course, mate, you're going to have to be uh, locked down all the way in all three of these. Let's talk a little bit about the bracelet. The bracelet 
for my money, is a lovely affair. Obviously, the Rolex had the, the Oyster Flex, that situation, or their Jubilee or whatever. I don't know quite what two to call this, but it's lovely. Got that kind of riveted uh, action on the side there, so kind of a high polish there. Uh, it's brushed uh, everywhere else. The clasp on this Tudor. Now, there are things I like about this clasp. I love the cleanness of it. I just think it's really clean. It's just kind of got like a no nonsense, no fuss kind of kind of aesthetic to it. But the operation of it, it sometimes is a bit of a pain. It, it, I don't know what it is. It's something about the the angle of the 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 little thing you get your nail under. Sometimes it's just a little bit of a bit of a pain to get that undone. But once you do undo it. Once you do undo it, I'm not sure that's great um, alliteration there. But anyway, it's a great, um, great class. Milled. Um, not There's no draw, uh, diver's extension here. There's no sweaty day extension. You have uh, three kind of um, three spaces there of micro adjust. Um, this is currently set on that middle one. Um, so a little bit of room, but no kind of on the fly adjustment, which I think maybe was a bit of a mistake. But nice enough. Signed there. Just there. Yeah there and um like i say not much going on on the back yeah that's the general kind of like basic stats out of the way how do i actually feel about this watch i've had let me chuck this on wrist actually i've had the opportunity to uh, wear this a bit both on the bracelet here and then also on uh, nato and this i would say one thing about this watch it, i think it's a bit of a strap monster i think you could put this watch uh, on a whole bunch of different straps, NATOs, single pass, uh, whatever whatever kind of thing you want to do there, uh, you know, some sort of butterfly class, whatever you want to do, I think this thing will shine. Well, I know it will shine because I've tried it on a few different things and it always looks good. For your reference, my wrist is uh, 7.5 inches, that's 19 centimeters, and it fits absolutely fine. One of the things I'd say about this watch is I love the aesthetic. I love it. I really do. There's something about it that's almost kind of retro-ish. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's that I'm just a sucker for that that kind of panda situation, the white dial with those um, black sub-dials, the, the left one giving you uh, your running seconds, the right one there for when you're using the chronograph. There's something about that kind of slightly off-white. I mean, I mean, it's no doubt it's white. Of course it is, but it's kind of got a touch of cream to it it's sort of mayo-y kind of delicious syrupy kind of white um the loom on both that 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 snowflake hour hand and on, on on the on the triangle at the 12 and the circles there's applied markers that go around it's kind of like a sort of antique not patinery but antique the the color coded uh, date at six o'clock just works well and you match all that with that black tachymeter, that, that ceramic tachymeter that goes around the outside, mate, it, it really is a treat to look at. So for me, where does this mark up? It marks up on a couple of things. The aesthetic, it's banging. It really is, man. Just the way it looks. The fact it's a chronograph. I'm a sucker for a chronograph. I love chronographs. Um, that bracelet, oh, it's just nice, mate. It just looks good. They're my pros so far. Okay, so now let's talk cons. First one, and I, it's just, it's, I, I knew it, I think, before I even actually got one of these in the hand, just kind of reading the stats and seeing them online a little bit. This is a problem for me. She is a chunky girl. <laughs> She's a chunky girl, man. Like, uh, I got like a, well, I got a, a Seiko 5 here that I'm, I'm kind of fixing up a little bit, right? Now, I know they're different movements, but, but, Look, look at the difference, man. I mean, this is, I don't know what this is, man. This is, I mean, this must be like 12 and a bit or something. But this 14.6 side, mate, she a little slabby. And uh, the situation doesn't get um, better if you put it on a NATO. You put it on a NATO, which I think it looks really nice on. I've got this lovely green NATO. Um, favorite, my favorite on favorite NATO that I've got. I don't even know where I got this from, man. I just had it for years. You put it on that, it really, you really notice it bulks up. It's still very wearable, you can do it, but you are aware, and I think that's a problem for me. Now, part of that's gonna be the movement. Uh, the movement in here, you know, it's a mechanical 
chronograph. It isn't some uh, just adapted um, movement with a chronograph kind of thrown on top. It's 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 doing the real work of a chronograph. That's why you're getting that clicky clicky click, mate. When you when you kind of really operate, it's that column wheel situation. I believe it's a column wheel. Tell me if I'm wrong. But I think it might be a column wheel. Um, so it's got a real um, proper movement of movements when it comes to uh, chronograph. You know the approach to this chronograph movement. So. That means it's got to be a little bit chunky, I guess. And to me, that's a problem. I think, you know, this. You, 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 I'm marking it down quite a lot for that. Uh, what else? This clasp, although I like it, like I said earlier, there's, there's a couple of problems with it. It's not my ideal. A bit, a bit of uh, on-the-fly adjustment would go down a treat, um, making it just a little bit more I don't know, a bit more easier to operate. I don't know, man. It's not like it's difficult. Don't get me. I like I understand how to work a watch. I'm not a complete numpty, but yeah, I don't know, man. Just something there. That's pretty much about it for me as far as uh, cons, really. Mainly that thickness and a little bit of just maybe some tweaking of that clasp for me. But you've got to remember what's going on here, man. You're getting Rolex quality finishing, uh, movements, um, design, but you're getting it for that Tudor price tag, which is, you know, still steep for your everyday man. Don't get me wrong. Um, and I think this is, what, 4,005. Let me check. With My friend paid uh, £4,550 for this, okay? That is a chunk of change. I don't care who you are. That's a chunk of change, man. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's a snipper cheddar there, right? But when you think about equivalent Rolexes, you're paying so much more. And here you're actually getting something else in the family we're going to be doing a kind of a, a, a bit of a battle between um let me get it actually we're going to be doing a little bit of a, a showdown between these two watches because th th they're very similar in some ways i don't know if you can tell it here on camera actually why i've got this 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 polar white is very a very white white compared this is where you might be able to see a little bit of that creamy tudor anyway this is the Rolex. This is this is your eight thousand one hundred, and this is your four thousand four fifty, right? And you're 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 getting um, still so much of that Rolex energy, ro that Rolex spirit, but you're getting it for that bargain price. And for my money, mate, I love the design of this man. I don't think you're you're getting shortchanged much in many areas. Anyway, what else do I want to say about this watch? I oh, know, man. <laughs> I, I used to. Here's one thing. I used to be against the snowflake hand. I used to see the snowflake hand and it used to feel horrible to me and, and I'd be like, oh, so it feels like a childish, chunky, kind of weird, like you someone drawn it with gloves on, you know what I mean? Just like, it's not very, there's no finesse to it. But that's one of my favourite things about this watch, man. That little snowflake, our hand. I just love it, mate. I don't know what it is. Yeah, this is a great watch. Um, if you get a chance to get this, you can get them pre-owned, not this one because this is very current, but you know, one, one, you know, one that's maybe a little bit older for a pretty decent price, man. Um, I'd say you, you'd be getting a, a treat of a watch if you did that. You really would. Um, so I wouldn't hesitate. Anyway, quick one in and out. That's it. This is the Black Bay uh, Tudor Chrono. I've been Rick Flat. This has been the ABC of EDC. Until next time, um, carry what you love.